It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. Thanks for being with us. I'm also one of the certified financial planners today. Across from me in the KFG studios, certified financial planner Josh Gregory. Hey, if you've ever lived through a job change, you know it can be a stressful life event. One of the one of the top stresses in life, right? Yeah, that's what we hear. Yeah, three. It also has big financial implications, and those may not always be real evident. So today we're going to unpack that together, talk through what are the major decisions you need to make when you're going through a job change. How do you navigate that? All that on the Wise Money Show today. That's right. If you have a question, and we've got several tax questions we'll be hitting in the second half of the hour, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. Call or text 574-222-2000. You can find us online, wisemoneyradio.com. You can submit a question right there on the right, as well as catch up on previous episodes. Check out blog posts and all of that right there as well. Lastly, social media, Facebook, Twitter, and the YouTube channel, at Wise Money Radio. You can connect with us there, and you can watch every single episode on the YouTube channel if you would like. So we believe here at Corhorn Financial Group that everyone needs a financial plan. However, we also know that even though you might hear that every single week on the Wise Money Show, or you might know that yourself, the catalyst to finally getting someone to say, all right, I'm going to pick up the phone and make that call is usually some sort of life event, some sort of financial event that spurs you on to finally take that step and take some action, which is in part why every single week we're trying to call you to action and say, let's take this next wise step in your financial life. Don't wait for something big to happen. But let's be honest, oftentimes you'll make a move when something big changes. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about some of those big changes, <clears throat> like a new baby in the house. That's a, that's a change. <laughs> but today we're talking about one of the big stressors, and it's definitely financially intertwined, and that is a job change, a job transition. There are several issues that jump right off the top of my head as we think about that change, but let's just break them down in pieces Let's start with employee benefits. Well, hang on a second. I want to back up here because okay. I'm curious. You, you and I, I, I was just sitting here as you were introing uh, the show. Um, how many job changes have you and I actually been we're, through? T- we're terribly boring. <laughs> so I, I taught uh, hockey camp in college, and I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings in college, but then I interned at Corhorn Financial Group and then graduated from college, and I've worked here ever, ever since. Yeah, I have similar story. I've had three jobs in my whole life. Yeah. One was a caddy in junior high. One was I, I worked in the uh, landscaping uh, garden center industry for high school and college. And then I've been at Corhorn Financial Group ever yeah, since. So, right. so it's not like we have tons of life experience in this area, but... But we do, it, actually. Yeah, we help a lot of people through this transition. This is often one of the, as you said, main life events that bring people into our office because there are all these decisions that have to be, have to be made. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's interesting. We, we get to peer into people's lives and see what they wrestle through during these transitions. And as you said, one of them is um, how do you deal with potentially either the change or the loss of certain employee benefits? Right. And and that's an important one because, you know, it is important to recognize that your paycheck isn't the only thing that you're receiving from the work that you do uh, with your employer. That's right. right. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, you know, people will hold a certain position or stay in a certain position actually more because of the benefits than because of the paycheck. Certainly. And certainly with uh, government jobs, uh, that certainly is is one, especially today with health insurance uh, changing so much. Government jobs, the health insurance has been maintained and pensions and so on. We're going to get into all of that. But uh, Well, so speaking of health insurance, I mean, when when you change jobs, obviously you have an important decision to to make, and that is, uh, or or a, a consideration is, will you have insurance in your next employer? Are you going from one group plan to the next? Mm -hmm. Or is there going to be some sort of a gap there where you don't have coverage? And you may have to 
you may have to make a decision on, are you going to go on to the Obamacare uh, plans? Mm-hmm. Are you going to choose COBRA and, and have 18 months of continuation of your former employer's plan? A lot of it just depends on the circumstances of, are you leaving one employer and going to another one immediately, or is there a gap? Well, so the health insurance piece is obvious. We're, we're going we're gonna to hit a few of the other benefits as well. But let's, let's talk through that a little bit more. Because if you're in the middle of a job transition, it's really because of, I think, two reasons, probably. And one is that you've found a different job that you think is a better fit for you. And so you're making a smooth transition. <laughs> well, there, it's important that you know the health plan that is offered at your new employer. Hopefully they offer one. And if you've got choices, then trying to figure out, well, which choice is best, which hospitals, which doctors are in network and out of network, and um, what will the cost of that be. You should figure all of that out before you make that change so that you evaluate it and can make the, the best decision. But the other is if you're having a job transition where you're not going immediately to another job. And there again, Josh laid out really the two options that you have. Maybe there's a third, and that's you could continue your health insurance that you have right now through COBRA, or you could go on the exchange and through Obamacare. There is there a, may be a third also uh, if your spouse is working mm-hmm. and you've never been on their health insurance before, maybe um, this is a qualifying event that allows you to jump onto their plan either for a short period of time or, you know, maybe permanently. It is a it, it is a qualifying event. So whether your employer drops their health insurance or you change employers, that's a qualifying event. One other thing with health insurance I'd point out is even if you're in that first camp where you're voluntarily transitioning jobs, you've found a different job, and so it's a smooth transition for you, the new company might have a waiting period before yeah. you're eligible. At least here at Corhorn Financial Group, it's 30 days. And so new hires need to make sure that they can continue their coverage or find a short-term type policy to bridge that gap. What about some of the other benefits like, um, you know, you, you may have disability insurance through your former employer, maybe some group life insurance? Sadly, I think the disability one, which I know you say is the second most important insurance you should hold, and you can explain why in just a second if you'd like, but uh, it. It's often somewhat inconsequential, I think, in, in, in your perspective. You think, oh, well, they, my old employer offered it. My new one doesn't. No big deal. No, it's a huge deal. Right. It's right. a big deal. You want to be aware of that. And there's a couple types of disability, short-term and long-term. If you're just going to get one, get the long-term. Absolutely. This is the type of insurance that pays to replace your paycheck if you're injured and can't work. And, and that's not just injury at work. You know, you could be out playing basketball in the front yard. You fall, conk your head, and can't work anymore. Um, how How's the family going to have income coming in after that event? Right. And what if that disability lasts for a long, long time? Um, you know, emergency funds are only built to last so long. You, right. You'll burn through that cash and, and maybe uh, other resources. You can only land, uh, lean on family members for so long. So having a permanent or at least a long-term um, income source as a backup plan is important. And as you say, that may not be something that you've ever given a whole lot of thought to. Right. You may have known that you have this benefit uh, through your employer. You've never really looked at, well, how much benefit is it? If I had been disabled yesterday, what um, you know, what amount of income would be rolling in for the, for the family? Now's the time to pay attention to that. And, um, and consider it. You could go get your own personal policy, a private policy, that you can take with you from employer to employer. Mm-hmm. Um, y- you have to have a strong vision and a strong financial plan before you would actually uh, take that action, most people. Good point, Josh. A- a- the other thing I'd mention, if you have disability insurance or even life insurance with your current employer and you're either switching to another employer that doesn't offer it or are going to be in between jobs, Find out if that life insurance and that disability insurance is what they call portable, meaning that you can take those benefits with you even though you're not with the employer and you can still pay that cost. That might be life insurance. If you're healthy, you can often find at a better rate on your own outside of your employer, but very, very difficult to do that with disability insurance. So if you've got the option of bringing those with you from your old employer, the new company doesn't offer it, you should consider that. 
What's the number one reason that people change jobs? And how does that reason impact your finances? We've got that and a lot more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. So have you researched that, or are you going to give your opinion on what the number one reason is? It's my opinion, and it's fact. <clears throat> okay. Josh. I see how we're rolling today. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, I was just joking. It's, no, it, I, don't, I will give my, I will state my opinion. Okay. And my guess is the court of public opinion will agree with me. <laughs> All right, we'll see. <laughs> I'm sensing with a the, debate. I don't know. I don't uh, know what you're going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't really have a strong opinion on this. So, yeah. Yeah, March 31. March 31. You disagree on either side. Is what you're yeah, saying. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I'll play devil's advocate no matter what you say. As uh, as the individual who creates the outline, it concerns me that Josh doesn't know what this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he hasn't oh. looked at what we're covering. Yeah. What are we covering? Oh my goodness. So, YouTube... This I, is what you wanted. Me unprepared. Yes. So, uh, YouTube, I, I have several friends who, after college, whatnot, made their way down to Jacksonville. And I'm, it's one of my friend's birthdays today, and I'm teasing him about the Patriots because he used to like the Patriots, and then they beat the Jags and broke their hearts and now he's pretty upset with me. <laughs> did they really beat the Jags though? Ooh, or, the or did the referee <laughs> the Jags? Like Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. What's the number one reason why people change jobs? Why have you changed jobs? And what impact does that have on your finances? We're talking about that today here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard alongside Josh Gregory in the KFG studios. Kevin Corhorn, usually with us, is out today. Special thanks to the attorneys at Ledoux, Kern, and Keene, as well as First State Bank, for making the Wise Money show possible. If you have any questions, let me just point you again. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Call or text any questions. If you have any needs, any issues that you're dealing with, we would love to help, and you can find us there. You can also find us online, wisemoneyradio.com. Lastly, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, at Wise Money Radio. You can find us that way. Oh, every show's podcast as well. Podcasts are Again, just I think there's a is it officially a gazillion podcasts out there? You can find <laughs> us on Google Play and iTunes. Search Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, Corhorn with a K. We're talking about the big life events that people go through and how it rattles your financial life. Really, some of the uh, subsurface financial issues. I mean, there's some obvious ones in each big life event, but there's others that a lot of times people miss. Um, they did just miss, and we, we want to help you avoid those sorts of mistakes. We're talking about changing a job. My guess, if you've ever voluntarily changed jobs, it was because of pay, right? I mean, there's the ancillary issues of didn't like my boss, didn't like what I was doing, but I think the number one reason, and I know Josh will agree with me, is <laughs> you probably didn't like what you were getting paid or another company said they could pay you differently or better. And that seems to have obvious consequences and repercussions in your financial life. But one subtle piece here is not so obvious. Well, wait, do I get to have my rebuttal? Oh, sure. I guess. I mean, you declared it as fact, but... <laughs> Uh, is it always pay? No, it's it's. I don't actually disagree with you. I, I think most people they're changing jobs because they think that this move will somehow advance their career, advance their family's financial life, you know, bring a a better future, whatever. What, what's the average? It's like every three or four years. I think it's every how, four. Last time I saw that. Yeah. So. 
So, you know, maybe maybe people uh, make that jump every four years because they find a better option out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Not every move that I've watched clients make works out to be better pay. Yep, that's right? true. Maybe it's the hope of better pay or, or better circumstances. But, but you're right. Regardless of why, the decisions or the, the ramifications could be the same. And, um, you know, one of them that maybe people don't pay too close attention to or, or maybe a potential pitfall would be some of the tax ramifications of a move. Yep. And it, it's not like changing jobs just automatically creates some kind of taxable event or a penalty in your life or anything like that. But it's a point of transition, and sometimes details get lost in the shuffle when you're making a big transition. And an example of that might be what, one that we've seen frequently. People mess up on their tax withholdings when they start the payroll with the new company. And they often, when we share that bad news, they often look and say, well, I kept my exemptions the same. I, I, I got to tell you, I've been doing finance for 15 years, finance major, graduated cum laude. Blah, blah. I have a hard time understanding a W-9. I truly do. Those questions make zero sense. And so that's because it's a W-4, by the way. W four. Oh my goodness, that is funny. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was You're intentional. Filling out the wrong form That's there, right. Mike. No, the, the, so the W four. But the questions they that uh, you can't get there from here. In yeah. my opinion, I, well, I don't know. Maybe you, Josh. Well, have you, have you I, ever seen someone fill that out honestly and arrive at the right withholding? I have not. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, quite often, you need to fill out the form, answering the questions correctly, and then make some tweaks and changes by right. withholding a little bit more or whatever. But I, I remember um, someone who uh, made a job change and uh, filled out uh, the, the W-4. W, yeah, 4. Yeah, 4, not W-9. That's funny. W-4 with four children listed. Yeah. But the last time that he had filled out such a form was at his former employer before he ever had kids or anything. Yeah. In his mind, nothing's really changed from one employer to the next, and he didn't realize that when you start increasing the number of allowances or deductions on uh, your withholdings there, they're actually going to be shrinking the amount that they withhold out of your paycheck. And, you know, during a job transition, you might not really recognize that Oh, yeah, I knew I was getting a pay raise, but you don't know that your paycheck, your net paycheck, is also bigger because you're under withholding. That's right. And if you don't catch that early enough, you may have a nasty surprise the next time April 15th rolls around and you're completing your tax returns. Some people, th that creates a problem that is difficult for them to bounce back from. So we just presented the problem. What's the solution? You guys hear from us all the time talk about the importance of tax planning. Tax preparation is what you're scrambling to do right now, and that's just get an accurate return filed, hopefully get as much deductions as possible. Don't miss anything. Tax planning is getting proactive and saying, all right, before the year's over, how, what's it look like? What's changed? Uh, let's analyze the situation. And part of that is analyzing withholdings. We've talked about this on the show before where it doesn't matter even if you've changed jobs, if your company has changed payroll providers or this applies to all of you. If the tax tables have changed, yeah. the tax withholding tables have changed, you all of a sudden might have a different amount withheld that doesn't line up with your situation. We're all facing that this year. Let me throw another subtle issue that comes up in a job change focusing on compensation that, uh, that most people miss. When, if you're changing jobs due to getting a change in pay, you want to get paid more or there's potential to get paid more, most people don't do the proactive work of then building the budget first. N normally, it's just, yes, this is going to make things feel a little bit better. We'll be able to have more fun. We'll be able to do different things. But they're not, you're not proactive and saying, we're going to be able to increase our savings by this and, and look through your financial goals to say, this is what this extra income is going to be able to do. And I'm going to proactively build a budget to make sure I hit those things first before we just kind of enjoy more of this money. Well, that's right. And you may have gone through the mental exercise of thinking, hey, I'm going to make an extra $500 a month um, year in and year out in my new employer's uh, position here. 
and maybe you come up with a thousand dollars a month worth of extra things that that you're going to do. I mean, it's human nature to double count, right? Yes. And and you may not stop and consider the fact that well, yeah. Uh, your gross pay went up by 500, but what's your take-home pay increasing by? Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I agree. I think it's important to not only shortly after starting your position run that tax projection that you were talking about, but also update the family budget with a new take-home pay number and uh, consider, well, what is this new uh, position going to allow you to accomplish in your financial life? Get those things built in first and then live off the rest guilt-free. How do you do that? And this is really complicated, but there are, uh, on the internet web, there's some things where you can go out and forecast a your paycheck. Now, you've got to input all the details. If you don't put, input the details, uh, kind of garbage in, garbage out. It's not going to help you. You're going to have the wrong forecast. But if you know how much you're going to claim on your W-4 and uh, you know how much you're contributing to benefits and, and so on, then you can see exactly what that take-home pay is going to be. I have done... So essentially, I'm inviting you, if you're in the middle of this right now or expecting to go through a job change, contact your certified financial planner because they should help you walk through this to make sure that you don't get backwards and end up with a big surprise on your taxes with tax withholdings, or now you've made a little bit too much, so you're not going to get that deduction or that tax credit, but also help you know, hey, this is how much, yeah, you you made this move and you're going to make 5000 more per year, but your actual take home per month is going to be X, and that's what impacts your budget. And by the way, we can help you build a budget. So contact your certified financial planner and talk to them about this move and these chain, this change so that you can have the right plan built. We always say the Wise Money Show is not a commercial for Corhorn Financial Group. There are tons of qualified, certified financial planners out there. Contact them. If you don't have one, feel free to contact us, 574-222-2000. If that's the most important or the number one reason people make a change, what about the number one decision that you need to make? That's still upcoming as well as tax questions here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. I can't believe I stink and said W9. That is hilarious. <coughs> my brain said W4. My mouth said I was going to let it slide. Don't but... let it slide. you got to call me out. That was too funny. That, that... I was just like, like, I've never filled out a W9. What am I missing? <laughs> no. My so brain YouTube... said W4. I'm looking at it. And my mouth said, W-9. You may have to complete a W-9, but what that does is it just matches your social security number right. and your name together yep. so that they know who to report your taxes under. But the W-4 is what figures out uh, what withholdings are going to happen out of your paycheck. And you fill one out for the Fed and for the state. Right. And it's a ser- at least the Fed one is a series of questions. And a lot of people wonder, um, how do I how do I fill those out? And when, and when we're doing certified or comprehensive financial planning with with folks, we'll realize, <laughs> okay, you've got to make a change here. And they say, oh, I've got to contact my employer. They can just Google search federal W, not, or excuse me, W-4. Yep. So, yep. And you can just grab one off. It's a generic off the form. That's right. All right. So let's pick back up with the 401k. Okay. According to Wikipedia, by the way, 250,000 yeah. available. 250,000. That's pretty close to a gazillion. Gazillion, yep. <clears throat> so, anyway. Okay. And then we've got, well, are there any others that you want to hit? What was the one that you said, the big stressor? Oh, yeah. Um, so, how do you deal with the stress and, and all that? Mm hmm. <clears throat> Um, I mean, we can hit that if you want. This well, is the most, we have to obviously hit the most important decisions mm-hmm. or the biggest decisions. Yeah. Well, let's start with the retirement plan. And then maybe if it's not worked in there, I can just say, all right, before we transition to tax questions, are there any others? <coughs> are you, I mean, of course, I'll chime in. We'll make it a discussion. But are you able to lead that, the choice with the Retirement plan? Yeah. Normally I teach that there's five, but I'm going to merge two of them together. Okay. So the 
cash it in. That could either be a lump sum cashing in or turning it into a stream of income where you're actually drawing off of it. Yep. Cool. So. <clears throat> All righty. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. I'm Mike. Across from me, Josh Gregory in the KFG Studios. Thank you to Bethel College Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett with REMAX 100 for partnering with us on the Wise Money Show. So far, we've been talking about the big life event of changing jobs. Some of you have been through that recently. Some of you are thinking about it right now. What financial things do you need to make sure you get right in order to make that transition smooth and successful in your financial life. That's what we're covering. If you've missed anything, go to wisemoneyradio.com. You can catch up on all the previous episodes. You can even submit a question right there as well. It turns into an email, goes directly to my inbox. And if it's a personal question, we can reach out, give you a call, get you some help. And if it's a question for the show, we can address it on an upcoming program. Lastly, you can call us, 574-222-2000, or call or text 574-222-2000. We've got several tax questions to hit, as well as one that I'm bringing back because it's just so good. It's from Roger. But there's a, at least one more big, big, big decision. I think it's the biggest decision. The, the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest reason why people change jobs is because of compensation. But the biggest decision that you need to make is about what to do with your old retirement account. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, it's important to recognize that you have multiple options as well, yeah. right? Um, the, the first option is just to do nothing. You know, many people, they leave an employer and uh, they leave their retirement accounts, the old 401k behind. They just let it ride in the account that it was already in. The, the nice thing about that is that uh, that's not a taxable event for you in any way. You just let the investments continue to linger where they are. Let me point uh, point out a couple things. I'm just going to forecast. We're not into forecasting here, but I'm just going to forecast that that won't always be an option. It so, co it costs the employer money to have your account still there, and if you've left out of the goodness of their heart, my guess is they're not just going to let it stay there forever. Now they already many plans already have a clause that if your balance is under a thousand or under five thousand you have to take it out. And some of them, just beware. I don't want this to happen to you. If you don't respond by a certain time, they're just going to send you the money. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Some of those laws, though, setting a minimal dollar amount were there to protect employees from, former employees from getting the money pushed out, though. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you have more than five grand in your 401k, then currently they have to let you keep it there. Uh, that has to be an option for you, right? Mm -hmm. But as you said, that might not always be the case. And and it might not even really be the best thing for you anyway, right? Right. Uh, you know, how, how many people come into our office who they're on their sixth job and they have a trail of breadcrumbs, you know, different retirement accounts scattered across the countryside from all these past employers and, you know, at some point they decide, boy, this is starting to get pretty cumbersome to me to manage, keep yeah. track of all that. Um, and, and so we can help consolidate that. That's one of the options that we'll talk about in a second. But um, it, it is an option to leave it where it is. You're at the mercy of that former employer, though, to always have great investment options for you to choose from. If they start tinkering with the list of uh, mutual funds that you can select from, you know, it's possible that the quality of investments may not always be what it is today. Yeah. So... Um, option two is also not necessarily a great one. That's to just cash the thing in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people with those smaller balances, the 5000 and under, uh, may have money forced out to them, or they might just choose to cash it in to help pay some bills while they're going through the job transition or they're moving or something like that. And th th the issue there is that it's a taxable event. Could be penalized. That's right. Could be penalized. And it it really sabotages your ability to prepare for retirement. Retirement is such an enormous goal. And the ability for compound interest, regardless of what the market's doing at the moment, you know, it could be a little scary. Regardless of that, the, the ability for the 
it to make interest and then make interest on interest and, and grow that way. If you cash it in early, you rob that potential. And my guess is your retirement just needs that money in there. Yeah, you not only rob the potential growth, but you're actually reversing your financial life by cashing it in, taking your lumps on taxes and penalties, and then using it for something that you, you might never remember five years from now what you use that money for. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a lot of people think, well, you know, I've only got 5000 I only have 10000 What's the point? Um, the, the point is the average American has about five grand saved for retirement. That's nowhere near enough, and part of it may be because as a nation, we're in a pattern of changing jobs every three to five years, and if every three to five years you're cashing in your accounts and starting over, you're never going to gain any traction towards this long-term goal. Worse yet, if it takes you six months or a year to become eligible for the retirement plan anyway, and then you're not and then you don't stay there very long, and you're not vested in your company match, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of reasons, yeah. but ultimately, you're the one responsible. You're the one responsible. So there again, working with a certified financial planner who can help you navigate through that will help you make great decisions. Well, one of the decisions that you could make with your 401k would be to merge it into the new employer's plan. Mm -hmm. In recent years, uh, it has gotten easier and easier for these retirement accounts to be portable, to move them, uh, to combine them, that sort of thing. And it is an option to take an old 401k and roll it into the new employer's plan. But we're right back to that same issue I mentioned earlier about you're really being at the mercy of that employer to have a great investment lineup for you to, to select from. Mm -hmm. So they may only have a dozen or two dozen different mutual funds, not all of which will be high quality. Yeah. And so you, you're dramatically shrinking the universe of investment options. And, you know, that, that could actually um, dwarf your ability to prepare for retirement as well. I'll give you a quick story. I was meeting with some, uh, some friends of mine Oh, I think it was two weeks ago, and was analyzing their their retirement plans to give them recommendations on what to invest in. And in his plan, there were only eight investment choices. Wow! And so didn't have real estate, emerging markets, and some other things that I would say are just vital to to building a diversified plan. But then we at Corhorn Financial Group, I don't know what your certified financial planner has, but we have some really top shelf investment analysis tools. And so we, we, I ran that analysis for these funds, and a couple of them scored very well, but about half of them scored awful. Wow. And, and so you only had, he only had eight choices, and half of them I just didn't even want to use. Yeah. It, how do you build a full diversified portfolio with just a handful of, of options? Yeah. Uh, you, you do what you can in those circumstances, but and, and there are certain... Uh, employers around town. I'm not trying to throw stones, but they need to go revisit the lineup and, and make a more robust plan for their employees. Um, we can't save the whole world, but uh, we'll keep uh, banging that drum <laughs> as long as we can. The, uh, the next option is the one that most people do, and that is to roll over the old 401k into a traditional IRA. And this also postpones the tax ramifications. Um, it, it is not a taxable event if you do it right. Yeah. There's a, some potential pitfalls by messing this up. Yeah. Yep, and, and it will be painful if you do it wrong. Yeah. Um, but if, if you have someone guiding you through the process, um, there's no need to fear that. Um, but what this does is it opens up the whole world of investment options. Most IRAs, um, if you set it up well, you can have a seemingly infinite number of investment options and, and ways to structure this, and you just have greater control. Yeah. Um, it, it'll be easier to pull money out when you get to retirement, and in the meantime, um, should be easier for you to grow those dollars. And it, I, more control, and I would even argue more, more flexibility, and when it's time to withdraw, how much tax do you withhold, uh, some 401ks now are offering Roth conversions within the 401k, but some of them don't. Well, within an IRA, it's very easy, uh, very easy to do that. So if you're making this decision, if, if all of a sudden you've been thrust with this decision, 
that's a hard time to start going out and trying to find a certified financial planner. So hopefully you've already done the hard work of talking to a handful and seeing which ones provide comprehensive financial planning and not just investments, but then also are a right values fit for you, provide the right services and, and planning for you. So make sure you have your certified financial planner helping you make that decision among those four. Again, two of them not great, one of them really good, the other one, uh, it depends. So I've got a great question from Roger and a few other tax questions coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Is this the fourth segment? Yeah. Holy smokes. Time flies when you're calling <coughs> tax forms by the wrong name. <laughs> we don't have Wi-Fi in the studio for over an hour. Wait, did you say a question from Roger? Yes. Did I go over his head or did you not hear me? I, I heard it. <laughs> I, well, I, he it I didn't hear it. Casey's still <laughs> razzing me about. There you go. There producer you go. So producer Casey. Again, is what you're <laughs> <laughs> Producer Casey Hendrickson got to the studio early today and sent me a text and said, "Hey, what's the Wi-Fi password?" And I didn't respond. I didn't look at it and, and ignore it. I just you heard, you heard your phone go off. I did. You heard me reach out for help. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was a calendar reminder. It's probably Casey. <clears throat> yeah. You know that meme where you're drowning and the hand is coming out of the water and somebody's reaching out and then they just give you a high five <laughs> and you die? That's what you this morning, <laughs> Oh, wow. I apologize. This is captured it's on YouTube. I apologize. Right? It is too late to watch. <laughs> right. so, okay, are you going to answer the Roger question? Dude, that's like a whole segment. I oh, love man. that. Okay. I, I can definitely answer the Becky question. Do you know that one? That's the Becky question and substitute. Oh, that's the one that you had done research on before. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this question. I, so my. Okay, I need to read this then. My hope is. No, you don't need to. No, we're good. I mean, I can hit it, but you're going to have a couple things to say, I'm sure. I don't have all the details for Ryan's question if we get to it. The estate tax exemption amounts. I don't know if. You know, if, I mean, most people, no change, right? Well, right. And I'd probably say it wrong if I tried to. Okay. <laughs> it's 11.6 million. Uh, actually, Mike, that's 11.4. All right. Four segment. Should you consider refinancing your home equity line into a mortgage simply because of the tax changes? Oh, got that question. And a few other tax questions coming up here. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Across from me, Josh Gregory in the KFG Studios. Kevin is out today. If you've missed anything, we are in the middle of talking about the big, big, big life transitions, how they impact you financially, and really what issues you need to be aware of to help equip you to make great decisions uh, as you're facing these changes. So if you've missed anything, find uh, the show. You can do so in a few different ways at the YouTube channel at Wise Money Radio. All the episodes are right there. You can watch them. Podcast, uh, Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Yes, you've got to type all that in, but we're right there, Google Play and iTunes. And lastly, on the website, wisemoneyradio.com. All right, so we're transitioning into, yes, Josh. Well, I was just going to say, before we transition, um, I, I wanted to make the comment, we, we started this show talking about how changing jobs is one of the biggest life stressors, right? And, and then we talked mostly about the financial planning implications of going through that, but I, I think it's important to not lose sight of the fact that it is a major life stressor, and you need to have a game plan for how you're going to deal with that, too. Yeah. I, I've had a lot of people come in and, you know, people share things in our office that they don't share anywhere else, sometimes not even with their spouse or anything. And I, I remember a guy with tears in his eyes sharing how he had gained a ton of weight because of a job transition and he just didn't deal with the stress well. Sure. For him, uh, he was turning to food and uh, it, it threw him off of his normal activity level and, and things like that. And uh, he was battling back. He was, you know, trying to change things, turn it around. But 
um, it, it was kind of a warning um, that, that I, I was receiving from him. Life stressors, they, they can kind of play out in many different ways in many people's lives. Yeah. I've had also people who have come in just a month after starting that new job, and you, you can see the stress in their eyes. They're ready to quit. It's just they're, they're fearful that maybe they had made a big uh, mistake by making this change. And I always try to encourage people, whether they're coming to Corhorn Financial Group to start a new position on our team, or if I'm advising a client, you have to give it at least a year. Yeah, It takes a good year in most new positions to really get a feel for it. Even if you're making a job change into the exact same role, just with a different company, it might take you that long just to learn the team and learn how things work, learn the new customers, that sort of thing. Give it time and it will work out for you. Great advice, Josh. Great insight. Roger's question we're bringing back. He 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 shared this oh several months ago, and when we just were barely able to hit it, I thought we'd have a little bit more room today. So here it is. Roger said, "I've heard that you're not allowed to deduct home equity line interest on your taxes. Is that true? And does that mean I should refinance my mortgage to pay off my home equity line?" And then here's the point we didn't get to last time. Should I also consider saving less for retirement and paying more aggressively on my mortgage now that I won't itemize and the interest won't help me on my taxes? So there's a couple issues here. Yeah, there there used to be some rules, very loose rules, about what home equity line interest is allowed to, to help you. It really, it used to be that, well, you had to have a home equity line due to your house. It, you couldn't buy a car on your home equity line. That's not supposed to help you. But they didn't really have any way of enforcing this. And now I, our CPAs, Ryan, and, has said, well, now that they're not allowing home equity line interest, how are they going to enforce that? How will they know as well? But we're doing everything above board. So technically, mortgage interest will help you. Home equity line will not. I'd be careful about refinancing. For some of you, it may make sense. Not necessarily for the tax deduction, but home equity line rates are often variable. And as we're seeing interest rates go up, you'll see your home equity line rate skyrocket, but your savings account interest rate, no change, most That's likely. Right. So you might want to refinance to a fixed rate, and, and, and you know the, the mortgage rate should be lower anyway. But be careful. That's called a cash out refi, can often come with higher closing costs and a higher interest rate. I'd be very careful if you're just doing that for the tax write off. The second thing here is be careful to incur that cost and make that change to get a tax write off that's not even there. He yeah. mentions, I might not even itemize. So, what, should you really do that if you're not even going to itemize? If you were close to itemizing before, you probably are not itemizing now. Right. Because they've essentially doubled the amount of the standard deduction. So uh, most people aren't going to get a full lift out of the interest that they're paying on their mortgage anyway. Things like charitable contributions and real estate taxes, all these things have to amount to a substantial amount, you know, 25 grand, call it, um, before you're able to uh, start itemizing your deductions right now. So I wouldn't... I wouldn't think of the mortgage in terms of tax planning. Think of it in terms of your overall financial plan. And is getting the mortgage wiped out before you get to retirement an important pillar of your retirement projection? And you can't know that unless you've gone through a formal retirement plan projection, which is something we do here at Corhorn Financial Group. It's one of the reasons a lot of people come in for the first time. And that kind of gets to the last part of his question. Should I reduce my retirement savings in order to pay more aggressively? Now, be careful, Roger, because you, in doing so, might do the exact opposite of what you were searching for. Exactly. And that is, how can I really improve my taxes? Well, if you reduce what you're saving towards retirement, if you're saving pre-tax, or I would even say Roth, you might have really hurt some of uh, uh, your taxes a bit. That's right. Unintended consequences can come when you start messing with um, tax planning strategies like that. And it, it, there's also the question here, though, of if we were to boil it down to, are you better off having a mortgage that's paid off, you know, owning your house outright when you walk into retirement, or maybe having a mortgage but having a bigger nest egg? Hmm. Which one's better for you? Right. And we often frame it as an either or. 
Um, I, I want you to have both, yeah. obviously. Yeah. If if maybe reworking the budget could bring both of these into reach with you, um, I, I think I would pursue something like that. But consider this. If you got to retirement and you still had a mortgage, you might be feeling defeated. You might feel like, ah, oh, doggone it, why do I have this hanging over my head? Um, but the nice thing about that mortgage, if it's a fixed rate, it won't increase for you during retirement. With inflation, yeah. That's right. Everything else in life will get more expensive, but your mortgage payment won't. But how are you going to make those payments? How are you going to put food on the table when you get to retirement? If you're counting on Social Security to cover everything, then um, you, you know you may have a rude awakening when you get out there to those golden years. And your escrow portion will increase over time, and they make that mandatory now. I'm so upset about that, or they penalize you if you don't want to escrow. So that will change, but your mortgage payment wouldn't. But I'm, I'm going to go back to something Josh said a, a while ago, and that is, what is financial wisdom? Well, you really only need it when you have a choice to make. Wisdom is knowing the best option among choices, not just a good option. And how, how you would answer Josh's question of should you have no mortgage in retirement and a smaller nest egg or a huge nest egg, but still a mortgage. You've got to wrestle with that one. And your certified financial planner should help you build a plan and help you build a context to bring wisdom into that decision. I've got one more question here we've got to hit from Becky. She's in South Bend. Great question. I think we can sneak it in here. I'm a substitute teacher in the community school system. Occasionally, I will buy items to bring into my class that I'm subbing in, and I'm wondering if I get to claim those expenses on my taxes. Now, this is obscure enough. We've been doing we we love tax time at KFG. We do a whole bunch of taxes, but I had to I had to research this one and talk to a couple CPAs about it. The rule is, Becky, is even if you're subbing, you're able to claim those out of pocket expenses that you spend on your classroom as long as you have more than 900 hours in the classroom for that year, which would mean you're subbing very consistently, which could happen if a teacher's out for maternity and you're a consistent sub or, or you're subbing consistently at a school. That can happen, but you've got to reach that 900-hour mark. The important thing there is if you do, then those expenses are a deduction on the front page of your tax return, potentially helping you with, well, federal and potentially state and helping to reduce your adjusted gross income for other companies. I love it, Becky, that you are engaged with the students. You are, you're you not just showing up for glorified babysitting. Nice That's job. right. That's, That's right. awesome. All right, that is all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh, Gregory, myself, and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great week. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.